Hi YouTube, welcome to Humble Adventures, my name's Dave and in this video we'll be comparing three of Paris's most popular museums. Those are the Musée de Louvre, Musée d'Orsay and the Musée L'Orangerie. Before I visited Paris I was searching all over YouTube for a video like this but I couldn't find one anywhere. There were loads comparing one museum to another but none comparing all three in the same video. I needed something which could help me make an informed decision as to which museum to visit that would suit me, my taste and of course my time budget. And unfortunately that didn't exist. That is until now. When it turned out that my schedule allowed time to visit all three of the museums, I decided right there and then that I'd make this video to compare each one to the other. So first we'll look through each of the museums individually before towards the end of the video comparing all three at the same time including what the museums consist of predominantly, how long to schedule per museum and one of my personal highlights of each location. So I hope you enjoy this video and it's able to offer you the information before your trip which I was looking for before mine. If you do enjoy this video please do remember to hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe and amend the bell notification settings to ensure you stay updated on any future uploads I produce. Well with all that said let's have a look at the first of the three locations, the Musée de Louvre. Now one of the first and most important things to know about the Louvre is that it is huge and I mean huge. If you were to take just 30 seconds to look at each item, you'd need more than 3 months to see everything, and that's 8 hours per day with no toilet breaks, no rest stops and no lunch breaks. So it's unrealistic to expect to see everything in one visit. However, I'll place a link in the description to a map of the museum which you can download for free. If you use that map to decide and plan which exhibits you'd want to see, you can make sure to visit those and not risk missing them because you're looking at things which you might not find as interesting. One thing to consider during your planning is that certain parts of the museum are closed on certain days, so consider this whilst you're planning which day to visit, and don't forget that on the first Sunday of each month the museum is free to enter, so although you might save it on the entry fee, it's likely to be much busier on this day.
As you can see, the museum exhibits many historical artefacts as well as sculptures and paintings. Although there are literally hundreds of famous works on display including the Venus de Milo, Winged Victory and of course the Mona Lisa, my personal highlight of the visit was the painting Wedding at Cana. This is actually in the same room as the Mona Lisa. In fact, if you're standing looking at the Mona Lisa, the Wedding at Cana is directly behind you and trust me, you can't miss it. If you're not familiar with the painting, the Wedding at Cana depicts a wedding at which Jesus is thought to have performed his first miracle, that is, turning water into wine. Now, you don't have to be religious to appreciate this painting, I'm certainly not religious myself. What I like is the immense detail, which when you consider its size of around 6.5 metres high by, I think it's just short of about 10 metres wide, it's simply amazing. I love the atmosphere in the painting too. Everybody's so happy and cheering and conversing with each other, celebrating the wedding of their friends. The people are happy, the sun is shining and the wine, thanks to Jesus, is flowing. It's a happy, positive painting. Next we have the Musée d'Orsay. This museum actually used to be a train station and you can certainly tell both from the inside and the outside, but personally I don't think it's a bad thing because I think it fits well as a museum too. Like the Louvre, the Dorsay hosts many historical artefacts, but the majority of the exhibits are sculptures and paintings, including a beautiful collection of Impressionist works. The museum also hosts regular temporary exhibits throughout the year. During my visit, I was lucky enough that an exhibit of Picasso Blue Etch Rose was on display, which was fantastic for me as I was unable to visit the dedicated Picasso Museum during my visit. Although the building itself was a worthy consideration, my personal highlight from the visit was the painting Starry Night Over the Rhone by Vincent van Gogh. I love how the water in the River Rhone seems to be moving and the stars actually appear to twinkle. 
I think it's fascinating how the artist is able to create such detail from a distance, such as the houses at the far side of the river, which you can clearly make out. Yet when you look closer, you can see only a mix of colours and paint strokes with no real distinguishable specifics. I also appreciate the couple standing in the corner watching Van Gogh. They were likely only ever there for a few minutes, if they were even there at all. But despite the lack of detail, you can clearly make out their intrigue and they look as though they've been standing there witnessing Van Gogh's work for quite some time. Finally, we move on to the Musée L'Orangerie, the smallest of the three museums. Although they may exhibit sculptures and other works in temporary exhibits, which they didn't whilst I was there, the main permanent collection is all paintings, with the vast majority of those being Impressionist art. Even people who have never studied art before can visit here and feel like a connoisseur with so many well-known and easily distinguishable artists and styles, with works by Paul Chazanne, Henri Matisse, Renoir, Monet and Picasso, the curators have done a beautiful job of creating the perfect flow through the whole museum. Of course, the main focus and the means of this museum's popularity is Claude Monet's Water Lilies collection, which consists of eight large paintings displayed throughout two separate dedicated rooms. The amount of detail in these works is staggering and suggests a lifetime of dedication to create, which is exactly what Monet did. He dedicated a large proportion of his life to creating these and other Water Lilies works. Despite the beauty and grandeur of the Water Lilies collection, my highlight is a much smaller, much simpler painting by Paul Chazanne, Boat and Bathers. From a distance, this painting may seem quite busy and involved, yet close up you can see just how simple it is. The colours blend well, the lack of detail actually adds to the clarity, and the picture itself is one of relaxation, calm and joy. Some might say the boat in the centre of the picture shouldn't be there, and I'm sure Cezanne himself considered this in great detail before including it. But I'm so pleased he did, because I personally think it extends the piece perfectly. Ok, so now we've had a look at each of the museums individually, let's have a look at the comparisons between them. We'll start with the Musée de Louvre, which is the largest of the three museums, and hosts historical artefacts, sculptures and paintings. So this would be the perfect museum for somebody with quite a broad interest in history and art. 
The Musée d'Arcé is a smaller museum, but not as small as the Musée Langerie. Also exhibits historical artefacts, but the majority of their exhibits are sculptures and paintings. Whereas you've got the Musée de Langerie, which is just paintings, and mainly of an Impressionist style. For the Musée du Louvre, I think that because it is such a grand museum, you really need more than the one visit. I would recommend having two visits for a minimum of six hours each. However, try not to get more than six hours in any one visit, because personally I find that after too much art in any one day, everything starts to blend and blur a little bit. The Musée d'Arcy is much more manageable and you can easily complete that in three to four hours. Give yourself five hours if you intend to visit one of the extra exhibits that they have throughout the year. And finally, for the Musée Larangerie, one or two hours would be plenty and you will leave there with a smile on your face, feeling like a true art connoisseur. And finally, to once again visit my highlights of each of the museums, for the Musée du Louvre it's the painting Wedding at Cana. For the Musée d'Arcy it's the painting Starry Night at Rome. And for the Musée de Larangerie, it's Boat and Bathers. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks, and I've managed to give you the information I wish I had before I went to Paris. If this video does help you, please do remember to click the thumbs up button and if you're interested in more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button and adjust the notification bell settings to ensure you get notified every time I make an upload. Thanks again for watching YouTube, see you soon.